Welcome to the Sporting Club at the Aventine in San Diego, California. We're here to do gravity this season. This month's sport is volleyball. Now volleyball is a wonderful sport. It's a sport of reaction. It's a, re it's a sport of positioning. It's a sport of explosions, of power, all the components of a lot of the functional movement patterns or any of the movement patterns we're capable of are exploited in the sport of volleyball. Now we have, today we're in an indoor volleyball court. We know that there'll be some differences if we're talking about beach volleyball, grass volleyball. We always have to consider what the ground reaction force is going to be. Now for me, I was a little vertically challenged when I played recreationally. The wood gave me an advantage to be able to explode up and to be able to c compete with some of my peers by getting my hands up over the net. In the sand, we know it's difficult to pop out of the sand. It's difficult if you're not over six feet tall to even get your hands over the net. So like the other components of this season, we are going to try to break down one component of volleyball. Now, the component that we've chosen to start off with is blocking. Again, a defensive position. Blocking is, is very, it, it can be considered a very simple task, but when we look at the applied functional science or the chain reaction biomechanics involved with blocking, we allow ourselves to be able to identify any limitations within our athletes or our clients and work on them segmentally using a GTS or any other modality. Now with blocking, blocking is really about, in the initial component of blocking is about positioning. So of course I wouldn't have the ball, but what I want to do is get to where the ball is going to be. So as I'm getting into position, if I'm a, a blocker and I have another teammate to the left and right because we want to block as many of the shots as we can, then I've got to be able to identify where the set's coming on the offense, where the set's coming in, and where the outside hitter or who it is going to be coming in for the smash or the kill or the spike, whatever you want to call it. So as I'm watching that ball, it's very, it's very critical that I time this jump right. And typically you're shuffling back and forth in the frontal plane. So you've got quick feet, a lot of hips, a lot of trunk, a lot of shoulders to help drive you. Your eyes are primarily driving your body where you are in position at the same time being spatially aware of where the outlines are, where the lines of the cord are, so that I know if it's, uh, if it's going to be a way off spike, then do I want to get up there and block the ball because is it going to be going out of bounds anyway? I'm getting off on a tangent here, but regardless, it's about getting into position. Once you're in position, then what's the first direction that you see the athletes go? It's down here. Hi. It's the load. We've got to eccentrically load all the big muscles of the body, the hips, the quads, the calves, all down into the feet. And you'll see that we even load our shoulders in an eccentric fashion in order to explode. So we position, we load, and then we explode. So we're eccentrically lengthened, we concentrically explode up. And a lot of times we're coming with rounded shoulders forward, up, as, and as you're airborne, you're either pressing through that sagittal plane or you're moving off in the frontal plane, depending on if you're blocking an angle or the line shot. So with load and explode, if we do this kind of fast and I'm looking for the defender, I see the, I see the set on the other side and I come up, boom, I come up and I do my spike. I can't touch the net. I've got to be spatially aware and I want to try to get over and get an angle over the net to deflect the ball to come down into their own court. Now, if we could do that high speed slow-mo, it'd be pretty neat. I'll try to do that because that's what I like to do is the slow-mo stuff. And I'm coming over here to position. I come down here and I load and I explode. You can see where my body is in space. And a lot of times I'm either coming across the frontal plane or even involving the transverse plane. Basically I'm loading and I'm going to explode. So my shoulders are all the way loaded. This is going to be a primary component of what we're looking at today is to increase the ability to eccentrically load and concentrically load in sync with the rest of the body to be able to go up in the air and then you're loaded again to explode in the air without any ground reaction force and then backing off the net, coming down, landing softly so that nobody's injured. And then you're right back up, turning around, looking for the set. So it's all about spatial awareness. It's all about reacting to where the ball is in space. It's all about fun. And when we look at the components of each of those, we'll look at, obviously, we've got a lower extremity component, we've got a lumbar component, and we have a huge shoulder component with regards to just the simple skill of blocking. So let's go over to the GTS. We'll take a look at those movement patterns. We'll duplicate them in the, in the, in the 
on the modality, the GTS, and we'll be able to isolate and integrate both functional and isolated movement patterns with a client on the GTS. So we'll head over. Let's hop on the GTS here. And as we see, we've got Nicole over here warming up, already getting set to fire the lower extremities in order to send the entire unit up into space in order to block that ball. So real quick, a review of the, of the principles. Remember, we've got gravity. Gravity is our friend as we load, and it's our enemy as we explode because we want to be able to get up as high as we can to block the shot. Now, the other principles are ground reaction force. Remember, if you're working with somebody who works on the, or plays on the beach versus the grass versus the, gra or the wood, those are all things to consider. The others are that we have momentum of mass, we have positioning, and that the body is driven by the, the cause, which is the ball, and the effect would be to go up and defend the spike or the kill. So as we get into the GTS, we're going to break it down into kind of a lower extremity, upper extremity component. And right off the get-go, we know that if we're working with squats, well, I'll keep the ball in my hand, and we're going to just simulate the, the load, then this is a partial weight-bearing plyometric squat. So if you're working to, to work on the stamina of the athlete or the endurance, then we would work in a partial weight-bearing setting. Now we want to add hand drivers here to mimic the sport. So you can see she can add the overhead arm drivers or hand drivers all while landing in the same position each time. She's got great facial expressions. She's really involved with the exercise and she's activating her neck as well. You can take a break there. Now what I want to do is it's not always that we're going up and blocking straight. We may have to block, jump up, block to the, in the frontal plane and have variations within our, our upper body. So as she does that same component, I might ask her to go to the left or the right, or maybe I can get more involved instead of just watching and act like I'm going to throw it to the left or to the right. And I can head fake and I can go overhead, or we can try and get the ball and you can go up and catch it. Now this gets tricky because I'm going to take that away because we don't want her to catch it. That's not a, that's a, not a legal move in volleyball. She's got to just slap it back down. Okay, so we've got our lower extremity. This is a basic, basic kind of plyometric jump. You can, I, I trust that you know how to get the client or the athlete the ability to jump higher from the foot down. What I'm going to focus on more on is the shoulder. That's why we talked over here about the ability as you go into a, a load to use the shoulder all the way back into an extended position and to flex the shoulder up, all helping the momentum of mass, all helping the body as a whole get up higher to block the shot. So we kind of warmed her up with some non-weighted overhead work. Now we can add weights together with the GTS, so without the plyometric, just a slow movement. And I might have her just come over her head a little bit more. Now this isn't going to be exactly the, you know, the a mimic of the, the sport because gravity, when she's on the ground, is going straight through her body. However, what we're working on is that eccentric load and explode of the shoulder joint. So she's coming back into a little bit of extension and then going into almost the combination lateral raise shoulder flexion overhead. And then we can combine that with the plyometrics. We're getting more and more, it starts to smell more and more like the sport, right? And then we start to add frontal plane deviations. So she blocks to the right. She blocks to the left. Good. A lot of things to think about here. She's, this is a coordination type of exercise as well. Perfect. All right, I'll take those. So that would be just a, a basic component you can add. You can also get real creative with some of the lunges or even working just on the ground with other weights to get the full body reaction through the body to see how your client goes through the motion. Now a quick, quick check here is when they, if you're looking at your client and you're watching them go up for a block, if you see one heel come up before the other, or if you see one knee dive in, or the knees dive in or out, or you see what's called a Trandellenburg hip, or the hip comes in, any type of weird deviation that you can kind of pick up on when your client or athlete is practicing the move, you can isolate that movement using the GTS. So if I, if I want to increase more of the mobility of the left calf, because as, I, as they come down, I see their calf come up because they have limited mobility, that, that might be something I work and just do calf raises. So you just have to kind of pull what you want and need from the real sport, get a good look at it there, and then come over to GTS and play. Okay, so now we're gonna get more shoulders involved. Thanks for being patient with me, Nicole. So we're gonna go right into that shoulder flexion. Now, we're gonna bring the incline way down low. There's a lot of torque involved with this movement. Level three, do we, okay? 
And because I'm training her today, I'm going to do all the, all the work so she can have a seat, kind of like she's going to do a chest that? press. <laughs> and she gets the handles so that the cables run below her hand. So you'll go palms down. And it's all we're doing here is legs can come up and we're focusing on the shoulder component. So remember, let's, let's freeze you here and let's look at where I was to go block. Now, I'm in a forward flex position and my shoulders go back into extension. Now, we don't have to be so forward flexed here. I want this to be extended. So you feel a little stretch here yep. through the anterior shoulder capsule. And as she comes up, we only have to work up to about here. So we'll just work on that small motion. And this is really the beginning component of the upper or the top down drivers for the activity. And if this is too difficult for the client, then we may just shorten the lever or bend the elbows just slightly. And we're still getting that nice eccentric lengthening. And she gets a nice little explosion as she comes back up. If you want to add more of a ballistic, just be careful. You want to make sure that they don't have any pain in their shoulder and that they're working within a controlled range of motion. How's that feel? Now, we can tweak the load up, we can tweak the timing, we can go back and forth like static equilibrium, but know that when we do those, typically in volleyball, it's a bilateral, it's an in-sync type of movement. How'd that feel? Good. Okay, so we're getting the shoulders warmed up. Now we're gonna move into more of a, uh, kind of an, a, an isolated move for the lateral shoulders. So we're gonna go into an inverted position and do a lateral shoulder raise. Now, unfortunately, I'm gonna put you in position and start talking again, so okay. you're gonna have to keep the blood from flowing to your head. Now, if we looked at that move, movement again, we're going up for the block, we're coming down, we go through extension, but we're, as we come up, you also are coming into our shoulder adduction, or abduction, I'm sorry. So you can either come up from the sides or come back from the back, up and forward. So we have a shoulder flexion and we have shoulder abduction. So she's going right more into that shoulder flexion component, which is, which is beautiful because before we were working more on this end, she, Nicole's smart. She went, she said, hey, I need to be strong up here too. So as she comes up, she knows that right about here is the most difficult part of that exercise because of this crazy 90 degree angle here. So she comes overhead, it gets a little bit easier, and then she comes back down, and now we'll go into lateral raise. So I always hate to, to think that it's all we have is a lateral raise and shoulder flexion, because think of how many different angles are in between those two variations of a shoulder exercise. Why do we handcuff ourselves and think, why can't you go five degrees higher? Okay, then come down, do that one, and then come up five degrees higher than that. And let's go three degrees higher than that. And then let's go 2.7 degrees higher than that. And a little bit closer to the body. So we're getting a lot of different variations so that if we think about the specific adaptation to impose demand, we are creating more and more variations within the body so that the proprioceptors, the soft tissues, all can adapt to that particular environment or that particular stimulus. We also have variations that you know from your course, like your static equilibrium and your unilateral, but again, with volleyball, it's going to be more of a bilateral movement. Okay, you know how to get out of that position? Legs come down to the floor, she goes ahead and stands up. Now we're gonna take off the squat stand and use my favorite accessory, the overhead press bar, or just the press bar. So here you can see we attach it to where this curve shoots up towards the tower. And I'm gonna keep Nicole at a nice low angle today because we've basically pre-fatigued her with some of those isolated movements. Now we're gonna go into, back into a multi-joint movement. Now I like to add the multi-joint movement sometimes more towards the beginning because we're working on power. You want the athlete to have um, power left in their muscles or their reserves. Now we are going from an, a, uni, or a uni joint motion to a multi-joint motion so that I can add this to the end and we've decreased the angle. So remember to take that into consideration whether you want this towards the beginning or the end. Today's purpose are to go through the exercise with few transitions so that we don't take up too much of your time at home. So here we are in a lying prone position. She's inverted. Her head is a nice natural extension of her spine. And what we're going to do is act like she's going to block. Now it's weird because you're shooting your body up the opposite way. So if we think function, okay, now we're really pushing the limits. But if we isolate and look at, hey, what's happening at the shoulders as she explodes up, so I'm going to go right into plyos right away while she's got energy reserves. That this particular motion is very similar to as you come up and explode towards the net or towards the ball to block the ball. So we're getting a nice eccentric load as she comes down. 
and a concentric explosion as she comes up. Now with the press, a lot of times you'll see your client as they start to fatigue, you'll see the chest begin to lift off the glide board. This is an indication of a compensation and that the exercise really is over and they're starting to recruit some of the upper chest musculature. Well done. Are you, are you done? Good. All right. <laughs> okay, you can come up out of that position. Now know that we have also the bilateral, the unilateral, and some of the interesting patterns where we can do a bilateral plyometric with a unilateral eccentric. Those are things and fun, fun little treats that you can do with clients. However, in volleyball, remember, bilateral in sync. Now, just to review, we talked about volleyball. We talked about blocking. We talked about eccentric load, concentric explode. Those are all kind of our principles. Our strategies were to mimic those motions in order to stimulate the proprioceptors, similarly how they get into the motion with the blocking, to stimulate the muscles, the soft tissues, as they do with blocking, and then to come over to GTS and kind of isolate with our techniques. So we have our principles, our strategies, our techniques are the hows, or the whats. They're the, they're the exercises on GTS where you're going after one particular muscle. Now, if you looked at when we're working with cables, or if you look at them, the client working with the press bar, you can identify if there's muscular imbalances within the exercise or within their body so that you can address those before the athlete continues to create a compensation pattern that's going to affect their ability to be a better volleyball player, to play recreational or at the beach, recreational at, a, at an indoor facility like the sporting club, or even out in a lawn somewhere, which is kind of an in-between. So we hope that this this month's or this section's gravity this season volleyball defensive blocking functional foundational skills helps you work with your clients and your athletes to improve the function of their sport and improve the lives of those you touch.